Western Fire Department has to be prepared to respond 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to a variety of emergencies on a moment's notice. This episode of Spotlight on Bowling Green will demonstrate several aspects of the fire department's activities and technical rescue program. The Bowling Green Fire Department not only responds to fires, we also have to prepare for other emergencies. There are a variety of rescue operations that are technically demanding and potentially dangerous. Each city firefighter spends hundreds of hours each year preparing for many types of emergency calls. Crews at each of the city's five stations are trained in a particular specialty. With the Barren River running through Bowling Green, it is necessary for us to train in water rescue. We'll now visit Captain Roy Sims at the walking bridge with a rescue demonstration. What we're going to do here today is uh, a combination uh, uh, swift water and uh, high angle rope rescue um, evolution. Uh, we try and practice in these environments because we have a river that runs through Bowling Green and in years past we have had uh, people that we've had to rescue, and uh, what is going to be involved today, uh, we're gonna have a firefighter that's going to uh, be floating down the river as a victim. We're gonna do a live, what's called a live bait rescue, where we take uh, one of our swimmers and we attach a line to the back of his uh, PFD, and he swims out to intercept the victim, and we bring him in on tether. Uh, because in past, uh, situations we have had to deal with uh, uh, people in the, some bad spots here in this uh, in the river within the city limits so we're we're responsible for this area where the river runs through uh, Bowling Green uh, here in town Uh, there are occasions in this area right here where we may not have a way to extract the victim after we've uh, done a water rescue. Uh, at, at which time uh, uh, a high angle re rescue may be the only option for us to get the patient out in a, a safe and timely manner. We package him in a Stokes basket and uh, then we bring him to a spot where we can extract him uh, with our rope gear uh, using high angle techniques, which in this case would be off the uh, walking bridge here in Bowling Green. Uh, and uh, it makes a good platform to be able to bring somebody up in a timely fashion. We do tend to uh, do a lot of training in, uh, in rope rescue, high angle and low angle, uh, because it's a common uh, denominator or a common thread, if you will. So uh, this, this is, is something that we have to do to try and stay on top of uh, a situation when we're called to uh, a, um, 
a rescue uh, type situation where somebody's in trouble uh, here in the city of Bowling Green. We've developed a confined space training exercise that Sergeant Dustin Rockwell we're going to narrate and explain what's going on. A definition of a confined space would be a space that's large enough to hold a human body, a space that's got a limited means of entry and egress, and is not meant for constant human occupancy. Some examples of these would be manholes, uh, sewer and drain accesses, uh, confined spaces located inside of factories, uh, oil pits, those such things that are not meant for constant human occupancy. In this scenario today, uh, units arrived on scene. The first arriving unit made a size up and established a command. As resources arrived, a command structure was implemented and the monitoring of the air in the area was begun. Our uh, incident commander deemed the uh, route that we would make entry into the confined space. The uh, gas detector was continually monitoring the confined space as our crews put their safety gear on, including full body harnesses and uh, rope gear they would need to descend into the hole. Personnel set up the tripod, at which time a rescue personnel was lowered into the confined space. Hey, Rob. That personnel assessed the victim, put them in position to be raised out of the confined space. Personnel above the confined space then used the rope gear to raise the victim out of the confined space with a mechanical advantage system. After the victim was brought to the surface, he was then moved over to the area away from the confined space and medical personnel took vitals, assessed, and provided oxygen as needed. Also could perform CPR as needed for the victim's medical conditions. Uh, an individual would want to enter a known confined space or if there's a question of whether a space is considered a confined space or not, you want to get verification and possibly have to obtain a permit to make an entry into any confined space. With the increased growth of Bowling Green, we're seeing a lot more vehicles and vehicle accidents. We're responding to these probably once or twice a week. This is one of our more common calls. We've, de we've developed a training exercise that Captain Ed Moss will explain how we go about extricating somebody from a vehicle. We've set up this demonstration to show what a typical accident looks like and how to remove a victim. In this demonstration, we're assimilating this person being entrapped because he is either physically or medically entrapped by the vehicle. We now have the jaws of life ready to then extricate the person out by removal of the door. In these steps, one of the firefighters opens the door from one side and the hinge side is removed last. Then we have one of the firefighters do the head traction and transport him out of the vehicle onto the spine board. We do then secure the 
victim to the spine board for further removal to the hospital. Just, just pick him up and move. Three, race. Safe. This is our new rescue pumper truck. A rescue pumper truck is a truck that has the capabilities to fight structure fires and carries equipment to fight structure fires, but also carries equipment to do rope rescues, auto extrication, and several other type of uh, rescue situations we are called out to. One of our nice new features about our rescue pumper is that it has a large amount of space in the cab area. We can use that, ca that space for a variety of reasons to help us do our job. And it also has available to it electric and compressed air on both sides of the trucks and reels. The new rescue pumper has a lot of gauges that we have on the previous pumpers and trucks in the past, but we also have got some updated electronical equipment that we use now. We're standing on top of the new rescue pumper now, and the reason we're up here is we're showing you the new storage space we have up here and the diamond plated cover that we have to allow us access to the storage space. Our new rescue pumper will be put into service in July. It's not fully equipped right now, but we still have the capabilities of showing you a few demonstrations. The cost of the new rescue pumper truck was approximately $380,000 to the citizens of Bowling Green. We serve all citizens of Bowling Green inside the city limits. We also make county extrication runs when we have car accidents. Another thing we do for the county is that we respond to mutual aid when, they, when we are needed to fight structure fires. The Bowling Green Fire Department is attempting to work with other fire departments throughout the region, such as Louisville, Nashville, Glasgow, and Franklin. This will enhance the technical abilities of the rescue program through the application of shared training with technical procedures. Since 9-11, agencies have realized that we need to come together to be more effective against the war on terror.